number 23 from section B of paper 1 of the 2014 Higher Maths. Circles question. First part for four marks. Find the intersection of this line and that circle. So here's the line, I'll just call that one. There's the circle. If it's an intersection you're looking for, then I'm going to substitute 1 in 2. It's a standard. Wherever you see y, write 3x minus 5. So x squared is fine, but y is 3x minus 5. 2x is fine, but y is 3x minus 5. Minus the 15 equals zeros. Now it's all zero. Now it's all x's. Just multiply it out to see exactly what we've got. Square of a bracket, square the first, 9x squared. Square the last, 25. Twice the product, the product is minus 15. Double that, minus 30. Plus 2x, here's another lot. Minus 4, so that's minus 12x, but plus 20. Minus 15 equals 0. Then finally, gather up all the different types of terms. I've got 10 for the x squared. The x is negative 30 and a negative 10. That's negative 40. The numbers. I've got a 25, a minus 50. So that's a 10 and a 20 makes 30. Equal to 0. Then, don't factorise it with these common factors. Take that common factor out. 10 comes out, leaving x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals 0. Now, strictly speaking, you can just divide that 10 out straight away. But we'll leave it there for no good reason, really. Except I remember seeing that somewhere. That someone complained about, oh, you can't divide by 10 because it changes the equation. No, it doesn't. It simplifies the equation. It changes the expression, but of course it changes the expression. Otherwise, how would you solve the equation if that wasn't simplified all the way down? But I'll leave it there anyway. don't know if it's in the marking scheme or not. So, for this one, it'll be x times x. That must be a 1 times a 3. And with a negative, it must go to the bigger, and they're both the same. So that means I've got the answers. x is 1, or x is 3. Now you've got to find the y coordinate corresponding to them. Well, if x is 1, pop it into this one. And pop it into that one if you like, better popping it into this one. So that'll be 3 times 1 minus 5. So y is going to be 3 minus 5 is negative 2. So there's one point, 1, negative 2. And if x is 3, popping it back into this one, you've got 3 times 3 minus 5. So it's going to be 9 minus 5. So that means y is 4. So there's other point, 3, 4. Now, does that actually say which is which out of P and Q? It just says, find P and Q, the points of intersection with the line and the circle. So if it means in order of traversing the x coordinates, that would make this P and that Q. But otherwise, I don't see any way to distinguish between the two of them. So there's the first part. Again, that's quite a lot for four marks. Now, part B says, T is the centre of this circle. Show that PT, and I was calling this P and this Q, is perpendicular to QT. Well, first of all, what is this centre? Well, you can pull it out of these two terms here. It's the negative of half of those coefficients, so it's negative 1, 2. So if it says show that PT is perpendicular to TQ, you've got two possible routes. You could use the scalar product, or you could use gradients. I'll just use gradients here, I think. Probably quicker using the scalar product, but I've seen that appearing in so many other questions. So it says show that PT, the gradient of PT. Well, PT means I'm going from negative, no, sorry, 2, take away negative 2. I know it doesn't make any difference, strictly speaking, but I prefer to do it in the order of where you start to where you finish. 2, take away negative 2, over negative 1, take away 1. So that's 4 over negative 2, which is negative 2. The gradient of, and the other one was QT. So QT would be 2, take away 4, for the difference in the Y coordinates over negative 1, take away 3 for the difference in the x-coordinates. That's a negative 2 over a negative 4, which is a positive a half. Now, to show that they are perpendicular, you can't just say, oh, look, look, 
it's upside down and it's negative and it's not. You have to make a statement which says MPT times MQT, which is negative two times a half, comes to negative one. Then you can say ah, PT is perpendicular to QT. Just using that abbreviation there for perpendicular, which you should be able to do. Now, for part C, you really need a diagram, just, well, you don't necessarily need a diagram, but a diagram helps. A second circle passing through P, Q, and T. Now, what are P, Q, and T? Well, T is the centre of that first circle. P and Q were the points in that circle where this line cut through it. Just move that over a bit. You already know that those two lines, P, T, and QT are perpendicular. And then it says, what's the equation of the circle that passes through these three points? So there'll be some circle passing through them. Now this one's only worth three marks. Some circle will pass through these three points. Well, normally it'd be, it takes some working out to get the equation of a circle through three points, unless there was a simple feature like this in it. There's a right angle triangle sitting in this. And one of the things you know about circles is if you take a diameter and join the ends to the circumference, it's always a right angle. Right angle triangles and circles sit in the diameter. So straight away here you know if that is a right angle, you can see if angle QTP is 90 degrees, that means that QP has to be a diameter. And the diameter's perfect, because if I want the equation of the circle and I know the diameter, then the midpoint will be the centre, and the distance from that to either of those three points will be the radius. So, for the centre of this circle, we'll just call it C2. So for C2, I would have, it's the average of the coordinates at either end of the diameter. So that's 1 plus 3 over 2, even though you don't even though you know that halfway between 1 and 3 is 2, and negative 2 and 4 over 2. So C2 is going to be 4 upon 2 is 2, negative 2 and 4 is 2 upon 2 is 1. So the centre of that circle is going to be at the point 2, 1. Now one thing to check for the radius is, is this in line with any of those points? By in line I mean horizontally or vertically, because then I wouldn't need to use Pythagoras to calculate how far away it is. But they're all sloping ones. So it doesn't matter which one I use for the radius now. The centre was 2, 1, because the line PQ had to be a diameter, because that made a right angle triangle on the circle. The radius will be the distance from C2 to any point. May as well take this one here with all the positive numbers. But I won't work out R as the square root. I'll do it as Pythagoras properly, because it's R squared you want for the answer anyway. So R squared would be, I'll pick CQ squared, C2, Q squared. That'll be the difference in the X's squared, the difference in the Y's squared. That will be, just put those in, that'll be 3 take away 2 squared, plus the difference in the y squared for the height of that right angle triangle, 4 take away 1 squared. So that's just going to be 1 squared plus 3 squared, 1 plus 9, which is 10. Don't really need to know what the radius is because it's r squared of 1 for the formula. So when it finishes off by saying what's the equation of that circle, the circle C2 is going to be x minus the x coordinate, 2, y minus the y coordinate, 1, equals the radius squared, which is 10. That's question 23.